What's up everybody, Zach Dresch here. You're watching The Dresch Code, home of all things music from a Dresch perspective. If you're new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe and tickle that bell notification so you can uh, keep updated on every video that pops up when it comes out. And uh, with that being said, let's get into it. I am talking about the top 10 Green Day deep cuts as well as the top 10 Green Day singles. Um, Green Day has 13 albums worth of material. They're my favorite band and they have dozens and dozens of radio hits. And I wanted to kind of show respect and cred to both the hits and the deep cuts just to show how much of a catalog they have that's so fantastic and catchy. Uh, so yeah, I am breaking it up. We're going to start with the deep cuts first and let's get into it. Coming in at number 10 is 86 off of Insomniac, a song that uh, should definitely have been a single. Uh, Billy Joe wrote this about being a big punk musician and being uh, pretty much called out by his punk rock community that he grew up with and basically being shunned from the scene for being a quote-unquote sellout. So a uh, deeply personal track made into a fun, catchy, and aggressive song that you can't help but play over and over again. They even played this one on Letterman back in the day, which doesn't make sense why it didn't become a single, but yeah, that's my number 10 on the deep cuts. Coming in at number 9 is uh, an old school cut from 39 Smooth. This is I Was There, written by their original drummer, John Kiffmeyer or Al Sobrante. This song is filled with nostalgic hooks and the song is so catchy with such a great sing-along chorus. This was an early sign to come of uh, what Green Day was capable of in writing the catchiest songs known to everybody. Coming in at number eight is Lazy Bones off of the 2012 album Dose. This is rumored to be about Billy Joe's personal struggles with substance abuse, because uh, shortly after this album came out, even during it, Billy Joe was in rehab. So it's suspected, it's not confirmed, but some of the lyrics are a little telling. That being said, it's a really great song, a very uh, relatable, uh, personal song that actually sounds like Give Me Novocaine, but way faster. So check it out and you'll notice the similarities. So number eight is Lazy Bones. At number seven on the Deep Cuts list, we have Viva La Gloria, the fourth track on the 21st Century Breakdown album. Man, this song should have been a hit. I mean, come on, the singles they chose from this record were just meh. You know what makes this song so great is the beautiful piano intro, and then all of a sudden this huge punk punk rock chorus kicks in, and you're just in love with the whole track. So it's, it's seriously seriously fantastic so i recommend checking this song out if you have not already it's track four off 21st century breakdown number seven viva la gloria coming in at number six is nuclear family off of uno this was the first of the trilogy in 2012 and this is a perfect way to kick off the trilogy it's this bombastic fun rock and roll track that's just so catchy it will not get out of your head technically it was a promotional single released as a video but it wasn't a physical single so i'm not counting it in the singles section it's going to be a deep cut because i don't have enough room in the singles because let's face it they have so many hits so yeah fantastic song nuclear family the first track off of uno and the trilogy check it out right now Number five on the deep cuts, we've got Church on Sunday from the 2000 album Warning. This is a love song from Billy Joe to his wife. It's such an upbeat, catchy banger. There's so many great tracks that don't get looked after that often anymore from that album, uh, besides Minority and a couple others. But seriously, this song is so amazing. Check it out right now. Number five, Church on Sunday in the deep cuts. Coming at you hot on the deep cuts is number four with Scattered off of the 1997 album Nimrod. This is my favorite track on the album. It's very nostalgic in its approach. Uh, it's one of the, the few deep cuts that the band still plays on tour, and I gotta give them credit for that, because that's... They know bangers when they hear them, you know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely one of my favorites. Check it out if you have not already. Scattered off of Nimrod for number four in the deep cuts. Coming at you at number three is Who Wrote Holden Caulfield from the 1992 album Kerplunk. This one is a straight-up monster of a single if it had been a single but it was on the indie label lookout records so they weren't releasing singles at that time but had it been released on dookie it would have been a monster hit i am telling you right now check this song out if you have not already just monster chorus monster verses monster everything just check it out who wrote holden caulfield kerplunk just listen to that whole album you watch my album's ranked video you'll know number three who wrote holden caulfield number two is burnout from Dookie, the first track. The song that gathered lackeys and burnouts of the world to sing, I'm not growing up, I'm just burning out, and I stepped in line to walk amongst the dead. One of the best sets of lyrics ever, especially from this band too. Such a great classic. They still play this one live at shows. 
because it's so good, Burnout from Dookie, number two, Deep Cuts. And finally, we've reached number one on the Deep Cuts list. You know what it is? Bet you can't guess. Okay, maybe you can. It's Letter Bomb off of American Idiot. How this was not a single, I don't understand. Billy Joe has even stated this is his favorite song they've ever done. And I totally get it. It's such a awesome bomb of a track in a good way. Not a bad bomb, like a bad bomb. Great song. Great song. Kathleen Hanna from Bikini Kill sings the intro. Nobody likes you. Everyone hates you. It's so good. Such a great kickstart. And uh, I wish they played this at every show. They don't, but they still play it quite a bit. But they need to play it at every show. Number one in the deep cuts, Letter Bomb from American Idiot. All right. We are now into the top 10 singles from Green Day. Here we go. At number 10, we've got Stuck With Me from Insomniac. My gosh, this bass line is so catchy. Cat's down, baby, in a hole. So good. So good. Um, I don't know why this wasn't a bigger hit. I know I'm going to keep saying that like a broken record, but seriously, this song is so good. And according to setlist.fm, they only played this song 61 times in their career in the last 27 years. This uh, song and album has been out, and uh, that's not enough people. They play it like once a tour, but seriously, play it every day. I would crap my pants. That's a lot of information, but I would crap my pants. Number 10 in the singles, Stuck With Me off of Insomniac. Number 9 in the singles, I am cheating on this one. Yes, I am cheating. Holiday and Boulevard of Broken Dreams as one from American Idiot. You know why? Because these songs blend into, e into each other when uh, they crossfade at the end of the song i don't know how to describe that but they're con one continuous thing it feels like one entity and that's why i'm cheating and putting it in one because they also have so many singles too that i had to give it a little extra push so holiday and boulevard of broken dreams two of what many people consider top 10 greatest green day songs of all time and especially radio hits of the 2000s you can't escape these songs still to this day they are that good i saw them play Last summer in August at the Hell Omega Tour, these songs went off like a bomb. So, so good. Holiday and Boulevard of Broken Dreams are number nine. I'm cheating. Shut up. It's a classic for a reason on the top 10 Green Day singles. Number eight on the Green Day singles, we've got Redundant off of the 1997 release Nimrod. Uh, this song is right before Scattered, which I had just mentioned before. It's another great, great song about kind of losing sight of yourself, but in very mature lyrics. A lot of the older albums, they kind of just say, I'm effed up and I'm stoned, whatever. But this song, it's kind of talking about, I love you's not enough. I'm lost for words. All, the, all these lyrics are just so great and so relatable and a lot more maturity to show forward with uh, the rest of Green Day's career. This was definitely a sign of things to come with the track Redundant off of 1997's Nimrod. Number seven. On Green Day singles, Longview from Dookie, the bass line that's unrivaled, the couch in the music video that gets destroyed, the monkey hanging out, and that's not a euphemism. I'm talking about the masturbatory anthem, Longview from Dookie. This was the single that brought Green Day to the masses, and I can't think of a better introduction. Classic, classic song. That bass riff, though, oh boy, Longview, number seven. Number six is J.A.R., from the Angus soundtrack and the international super hits. This was never released on a regular album, like it, except for the greatest hits. Um, it went to number one on the rock charts. That's pretty cool. This was the only hit written by Mike Durnt from Green Day. So uh, yeah, he knocked it out of the park on this one. J-A-R stands for Jason Andrew Relva, a friend of theirs who died from complications from a car accident in 1992. This was written in tribute to him. And it's such a gorgeous, catchy, catchy song. Obviously, the bass line is so good. Mike wrote it. So, I mean, he's going to have the bass be at the forefront. Some of these lyrics are just so, so fantastic. They pull this one out live occasionally. Not too often, but again, they should play it more. Uh, J-A-R, number six on the top ten Green Day singles. Coming at you, number five on the top ten Green Day singles is Bang Bang. The uh, ultimate comeback single from the Oakland Trio that I never saw coming. This is... Without a doubt, a banger of a single. <laughs> but seriously, folks, it's a really fast and intense song. Probably the most intense song the band's ever done. It's uh, written from the perspective of a uh, mass shooter, so you know it's dark and it's really intense. But what a way to kick off the, uh, the marketing for this album. The best way you could possibly represent this album. So good. The best song of the album. And the best song of theirs probably in the last 10 or 15 years or so. Such a great song. Bang Bang, number five, off of Revolution Radio. Number four is American Idiot. The opening track, 
to the amazing rock opera album, American Idiot. The song that brought the band back to the attention of the whole world. The song that resurrected their career and showed everyone, hey, we're back and we're going to kick ass. Uh, this song was huge during the bush Carey presidential campaign, and how could it not be? Great timing when that album came out. And it's sad that that album is still relevant today, um, but it just shows how timeless they can be when they write material. So number four, American Idiot, top ten Green Day singles. Number three is Basket Case from Dookie. How could I not put this on the list? How could I seriously not? Uh, this is a classic song about panic disorder. It united a whole nation of people that all felt isolated and messed up. Uh, this is Billy Joe at his lyrical best, proving how relatable his lyricism can be and how you can simultaneously write one of the catchiest songs of all time and have it be about anxiety and panic disorder. Uh, the music video was even more on the nose, too, being filmed at a mental institution. And, you, and uh, it was filmed black and white, and they added color to it later. I thought that was a cool effect. One of the best music videos of the 90s for sure, too. So basket case at number three from Dookie. Sidebar, I've been saying it Dookie. Isn't it Dookie? I'm going to say both, whatever, who cares. Speaking of Dookie, in the best way possible, we've got When I Come Around at number two for the top 10 Green Day singles. This bass line, this riff, everything about it is just timeless. One of the best songs of the 90s, probably top 10 for me. Um, I just never get tired of this song. And this song was the fourth single off Dookie and proved what a hit-making machine this band was. And uh, yeah, this is the first Green Day song I personally fell in love with back in the day. And it's one of the best songs ever, without a doubt. When I Come Around, number two, from Dookie. And it comes to this. My favorite Green Day song of all time, and my number one single, Waiting, off of the album Warning. Oh, this is the best song they've ever had. Warning was chock full of hits, but this takes the friggin' cake. Uh, it's a song about perseverance and not giving up. As cliche as that sounds, that's what this band's good at writing relatable songs that are upbeat and catchy. Um, they've started playing it more on tour again, too, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, yeah, this song is so great. You'll have to listen to it to yourself. I can't give it enough more credit. It, I've got to say more, but I don't have enough time. Uh, check out Waiting, my favorite Green Day song. Yeah, there it is. Number one, Waiting, top 10 Green Day singles, and probably of all time. Thank you so much for watching this video. What are your favorite Green Day songs? Let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe, tickle the bell for notifications, and uh, let me know what artists you'd like me to rank in the future, song-wise, album-wise, and any sort of topics you want me to talk about. I'd be happy to do it. I've got so many more artists I'm going to cover on this channel, so just, just you wait and see. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one here on The Dresh Code.